say goodbye to monotonous books, and say hello to colorful, interconnected mind maps. In this series, we will quickly help you revise important concepts with the help of mind maps, which you can access later using our app. In this video, we will quickly revise the basics of embryology. First, we will talk about the pharyngeal apparatus. It plays a crucial role in the formation of various structures in the head and neck region. The pharyngeal apparatus consists of three layers, the endoderm, ectoderm and mesoderm. The endoderm is the innermost layer of the pharyngeal apparatus. It forms outpouchings or invaginations between the arches known as pharyngeal pouches. There are a total of four pharyngeal pouches that persist during development. The ectoderm is the outermost layer of the pharyngeal apparatus. It forms invaginations between the arches called pharyngeal clefts. Similar to the pouches, there are four pharyngeal clefts that persist during development. The mesoderm is the middle layer of the pharyngeal apparatus. It thickens to form six bulges called pharyngeal arches. The fifth pharyngeal arch usually disappears during development, while the first four and the sixth arch persist. Within each pharyngeal arch, four elements develop. The pharyngeal nerve, pharyngeal muscle, pharyngeal cartilage and pharyngeal artery. The pharyngeal apparatus is a dynamic and highly coordinated system that plays a crucial role in the development of the head and neck structures. Any disruption or abnormalities during this process can lead to congenital anomalies and various disorders affecting the development of vital structures in the region. Now, as we have covered earlier, pharyngeal cleft is ectodermal in origin. Four clefts persist and in the end, only the first cleft persists and forms the external acoustic meatus. The cervical sinus is filled with connective tissue and disappears. If it persists, it's known as the cervical sinus. Next, pharyngeal pouches are imaginations of the endodermal lining of the primitive pharynx that contribute to the development of various structures in the head and neck region. Different structures are derived from each pouch. The first pharyngeal pouch, tubotympanic recess, this forms the auditory tube and the middle ear cavity. The second pharyngeal pouch gives rise to the palatine tonsil. The third pharyngeal pouch, the dorsal part, gives rise to the parathyroid glands, while the ventral part gives rise to the thymus gland. The fourth pharyngeal pouch, dorsal part gives rise to parathyroid 4 and the ventral part contributes to the formation of the lateral thyroid lobes. The fifth pharyngeal pouch, the dorsal part of the fifth pouch gives rise to the ultimobranchial body which fuses with the thyroid gland. The ultimobranchial body or C cells of the thyroid gland secrete the hormone calcitonin. Finally, coming to mesodermal origin, the development of pharyngeal arches gives rise to various structures throughout the body. There are a total of six pharyngeal arches and each arch has components like nerve, muscle, cartilage and artery. The fifth arch is rudimentary and disappears. You can pause the video here and take down this section of the mind map for information on the pharyngeal arches. An important point to note here is that the head bulge, somites, stomodium or mouth cavity and cardiac bulge are essential parts of the embryo during development. Now, coming to an important part which is the development of the face. It's a complex process that involves the interaction of multiple facial prominences and tissue growth. Development of the face begins in the fourth week of intrauterine life. The face is dominated by the frontal prominence, which arises from the overhanging forebrain. On both sides of the frontal prominence, there are medial nasal processes and lateral nasal processes. Maxillary processes grow and crowd the nasal processes closer together. The nasomedial processes grow quickly and fuse with the maxillary processes to complete the arch of the upper jaw. The processes give rise to the philtrum of the upper lip. Failure of fusion of the medial nasal processes with the maxillary processes can lead to cleft lip. The fusion of the maxillary processes and nasal processes form the oro-optic groove. If unfused, an oblique facial cleft is formed. The palate is formed from multiple components. The frontal nasal processes form the median part of the upper lip. Premaxilla forms the primitive palate and maxillary processes form the soft palate. Failure of fusion between the premaxilla and palatal processes can lead to bilateral cleft palate. Non-fusion of one palatal process with the premaxilla results in a unilateral cleft palate. A midline cleft can occur due to failure of fusion of the palatal processes. Also, teratogenic drugs like phenytoin can cause a bifid uvula where the uvula is split into two parts. Now, we'll quickly go over the development of thyroid. The thyroid gland is the first endocrine gland to develop in intrauterine life. It arises from the floor of the pharynx as a diverticulum from the dorsum of the tongue. The thyroid diverticulum elongates to form the thyroglossal duct, which further elongates and divides into two parts, contributing to the development of the thyroid gland. 
The ultimobranchial body contributes to the development of parafollicular cells present in the gland. Various congenital anomalies can occur during development, including thyroid agenesis, lingual thyroid, aberrant thyroid, and thyroglossal cyst. Lastly, coming to development of tongue. Tongue is derived from pharyngeal arches 1 to 4 and occipital somites. You can make a note of this table for quicker retention about the development of tongue from this mind map. With this, we have come to the end of this video discussion. Hopefully, we have helped you revise this topic quickly. Now, you can head over to the MCQ section of our app for solving some questions. Happy learning!